He says, I'm not going to speak to you through the mysteries, but I'm going to speak plainly, clearly, because it's been given to you to know the mysteries. And so he's wanting to share secrets with us because we are his friends. A friend of God. Where he used to lay his head on John's chest, call him the beloved. Well, he's coming to us in the night seasons, into our bedchambers, and he's creating specific calling dreams for us so that we are able to step into everything that he has called us to. He's showing us very clearly. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you to prosper you, to bless you, to increase you. The angel Gabriel said to Daniel, do not fear, Daniel, for the first day that you set your heart meaning your imagination, to understand, and you humbled yourself before God, your faith-filled words were heard in heaven, and I have come because of the power that is found in your prayerful words. Are your prayers powerful? Are you executing and releasing faith with it? Because it's impossible to please God without faith. If we're just saying words, but we're not expecting and we're not releasing it with faith, we're not getting through. God wants us to know that our prayers have the power to move both heaven and earth. The angelic realm cannot just insert itself. It has to wait for us to invite it in to battle and war with us. And this morning, we sent legions over to Israel. And they will feel the change. They will feel the power of that. They will feel that and lives will be spared and anointings will come and the angels are supercharged because they're thinking, yes, we've been commissioned. We've been sent out to battle on behalf of God's beloved people. And that's why God is calling Gentile and Jew to be that one new man. And where the spirit of unity is, there is the commanded blessing. And that's what we're experiencing during this time. God is saying, I see that your eyes are towards me. Your heart is completely towards you. My eyes are searching to find those whose hearts, their imaginations are totally towards me so that I can show myself to them and be strong on their behalf. God is looking for his remnant people that he wants to operate through so that he can be able to demonstrate himself in the greater works dimension. The measure of God's presence that we receive is determined by the time we spend praying according to his will. When Jesus was facing death in the garden, he asked God if there's any other way, but nevertheless... Not my will, but yours. And so when we can discern the heart of God and we find out what his perfect will is and we come into a yes and amen agreement, then all of heaven stands at alert to accomplish that because it's already accomplished in the heavenly realms. Everything that happens here on the earth has already happened in the spiritual. And so God is looking for us to begin to release that decree during the era of the mouth. When we search out and encounter the depths of God, it is then that we realize we are destined to be in Christ. And when you realize you're already in Christ and Christ is in you, there's a new level of confidence that comes because you are hidden in Christ. So you're not even the one taking the shots. You are hidden in him. When you speak, the enemy hears Christ's voice speaking through you. And so when we use the word of God, every time our eyes see God in prayer, we are envisioning his light that shines on our path, giving us clarity. So all around us, we observe that God's creation is pregnant. Mary was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, and it impregnated her with Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. When the Holy Spirit overshadows each one of us, we have a Mary encounter. But what are we being impregnated with? And are we carrying it to term 
or are we aborting it? Because God comes to each person. He's not a respecter of persons. What he did for one, he will do for the other. But we have to ask, seek, and knock. And he says, when you do that, the door, which is the dimension we are in right now, the dimension of the door, shall be open to you. And Revelation 4 says, there is a door open in heaven, and a voice as a trumpet is saying, come up here. And let me show you things that will soon take place. So we're not caught off guard on anything because God has already shown us. He's telling us. We're decreeing it. We're taking dominion. And every time that our eyes see God in prayer, he releases another dimension of light. Corinthians says that when our, we, every time we turn our face towards the Lord, another veil is removed. Moses is not the only one that has face-to-face encounters with God. We can't encounter him in the flesh. But when we step out of the flesh and our carnal, carnal mind, which is enmity with God, we can behold him in his glory when we are spiritually transformed into his glory realm and we become like him. And so God is moving all around us so that we can enjoy his presence, and imaginative faith empowers us to a physical response so that we can have visions of who he is. A vision comes to show us who God is. It demonstrates his characteristics, his attributes. It changes and transforms us. It's imprinted on our heart so that we're able to receive what God is saying.